I didn't really get to finish the 4.1 lesson note, so I thought that I would uh, make a quick tutorial. But since we're going over this anyway, so this is the perfect time because, you know, the part about the different kinds of indicators, you know, much better done if you can actually see the indicators. So here we're talking about uh, cabbage juice, and cabbage juice is red cabbage. It has something called anthocyanins in there, and they are different colors with acids and bases. So our question here is, what if we had uh, a solution of KOH, which because of the OHs, we know it's going to be basic. So it's going to be over on this end, and I would think, you know, it'd probably be somewhere in the blue-green range, you know, probably a nice blue color. So for cabbage juice, you got to remember the reds are the acids, and the blues and greens and maybe yellow is a base. For phenolphthalein, okay, phenolphthalein is colorless until you get to the pH about 8 or 9, and then it turns a nice pink. Okay, now we're going to find out when we do this, we're going to want to try to get to this very, very, very pale pink color, uh, and that's when we're going to stop like a titration and things. Okay, universal. This is universal, and you can buy different universals from different companies, but we buy it from Flynn. So it's green when it's neutral, and so when it's a basic solution, we would expect it to be in the blue to the purple range. So this would probably be blue or purple. And litmus paper, litmus paper comes in two kinds. You get red litmus paper and you get blue litmus paper, even though that blue looks purple, but we call it blue. And if you have red litmus paper and you put some base on it, it turns blue. And if you have blue litmus paper, you put acid on it, it turns red. So the answer here would be that in the KOH solution, it would be blue. Now for the other part about this, about all these different uh, compounds, we want to look at them and say, okay, do we think that they're acids? Do we think that they're bases? And I will post the uh, actual answers on the website so you can look at that. But we want to just think about these a little bit. So the HNO2, okay, this guy is starting with an H, okay, so that's a good indication that this is an acid. And um, it's not one of our strong acids, so this is going to be a weak acid. I'll just say WA. And uh, what is this conjugate? Okay, if this is an acid, it donates. So what's going to be left over is NO2 minus. So that would be its conjugate base. The next one, H3PO4. Again, it starts with H's, so it's going to be an acid, and it's not one of our strong acids, so I'm going to call it a weak acid. And again, you know, if it gives off an H, then what's going to be left, in this case, would be H2PO4 with a minus charge and an H plus. Okay, F minus. F minus, okay, is a conjugate already of a weak acid, so think of HF, and so this F minus is the conjugate base of that weak acid. So it's going to be a conjugate base, and what's going to happen with it is that you're going to have, um, now its conjugate would be HF, okay, which is an acid. So F minus, it's going to pick up some water. It's going to be associated with water. And if it does that, then it's going to turn into HF and uh, we'll have OH minuses. Okay, KOH. KOH is a nice strong base. So it's one of our eight strong bases. It's a but, um, alkaline metal with a hydroxide. And so if it accepts Okay, because it's a base, so it's going to accept a proton, it would become water. Okay, magnesium hydroxide, that's going to be a weak base. And the reason it's a weak base is just because it doesn't dissolve, okay, because magnesium hydroxide is not very soluble. So you're not going to get a very strong solution of that. But the little bit that does dissolve actually dissociates. But again, its conjugate would be H2O. Okay, CH3OH, when you see that... Uh, uh, COOH, and you should think, okay, that is uh, an acid, that's an organic acid, COOH, so it's going to donate this H here at the end, so it's going to be CH3COO minus, and this would be a weak acid. Now, HCOO, then you see those OO, then you say, okay, that used to be, okay, HCOOH, Okay, that would be its conjugate acid. So this guy is actually a base. And I say probably a weak base. K 
Okay, C2H5OH. Okay, when we see that, okay, that is an alcohol. Okay, so it's not an acid or a base. Okay, that's going to be a neutral. And it would not have a conjugate. Okay, when you see NH2, NH2, that means that that guy is a base, like it's an amine. Okay, so this is going to be an organic base, amine, because it has a lone pair on that nitrogen, so it can accept a proton. So if it does accept a proton, it's going to be C2H5, and then the N will grab another H+, plus, so it will be NH3+. Plus. Kind of odd, but we'll get used to it. Now the next one, CH3, NH3+, plus, so that is the conjugate acid of another base. Okay, so this is actually going to act like an acid, and it would be CH3, NH2 after it donates. So this is going to be a weak acid. HCl, okay, the classic strong acid. And when it donates, it would be Cl-. minus. And that Cl minus is going to be the conjugate base of that strong acid, so it's going to be a, a not a good uh, acceptor. Okay, ClO3 minus. Okay, that comes from the weak acid HClO3, so this is going to have absolutely no tendency to grab onto H pluses, so it's not going to be an acid or a base. Okay, I would just say it's going to stay neutral, it will just float around in solution. So we're not going to talk about its conjugate. Same thing, sodium. Sodium comes from the strong base NaOH. Okay, so it's going to have no tendency to change anything, so it's not going to be an acid or a base. Okay, water. Okay, water, we said, okay, it, it's one of these that it can accept a proton, okay, because an H plus could come and sit on one of these lone pairs and give the whole thing a plus charge. Okay, or it could donate. You know, a water molecule could donate, and after it donates, then it would have an OH minus. Okay, so uh, this is going to be amphiprotic or amphoteric. I'll just write that, and you can kind of figure that out later. And its conjugate depends on what you're talking about. It could turn into this conjugate or this conjugate, depending whether it's an acid or a base. And this last one here, also the same thing. Okay, it's HSO3 minus. So that could pick up an H plus and become H2SO3, or it could lose another H plus and become SO3 2 minus. So when you get a diprotic acid and you lose one of the H's, then you've got this amphiprotic or amphoteric thing. So it could be either one. So that's the ideas here. Go back and look at the answers and you can fill in the other information. That's it.